Hi there, I'm your host, Mr. Doyle, and this is a great undertaking. In this video, I will be discussing the 1984 feature-length film adaptation of Stephen King's 1980 novel, Firestarter. This movie hasn't necessarily stood the test of time, but in terms of special effects, acting, and even its synth-based soundtrack, it isn't the worst of the 15 King movies that saw release in the 80s. I want to clarify this statement, however, isn't a great movie. Hell, it may not even be a good movie, but I'd rather watch this movie 20 times in a row than have to suffer through Children of the Corn even once. History and Background Apparently John Carpenter had originally been selected to direct the movie, but Universal Studios replaced him with Mark Lester after Carpenter's film The Thing underperformed at the box office in 1982. First of all, John Carpenter is one of the most beloved horror film directors of the era and arguably one of the all-time greats. And The Thing, in my humble, not at all biased, totally objective opinion, is one of the greatest horror movies ever made, and this is not a controversial opinion among horror film aficionados. The Thing was a groundbreaking film that holds up to this day, and prior to The Thing, Carpenter had directed Halloween, Escape from New York, Assault on Precinct the Pre the Assault on Precinct 13, all of which are still considered classics. The guy Universal replaced Carpenter with, Mark Lester's greatest accomplishments prior to were Roller Boogie, a disco-inspired roller skating musical, ugh, and Class of 1984, which was an edgy high school revenge thriller with a laughable futuristic punk rock aesthetic. Two films which are not considered the greatest anythings of ever and most definitely have not stood the test of time. Why Universal thought bringing Lester in to replace Carpenter was a smart choice is beyond me. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that Lester didn't do a decent enough job with Anyway, I would like to point out that The Thing did perform better at the box office than Stop it, Keith, now deceased vocalist for 90s electronic punk dance music band The Prodigy, rest in peace, that's enough. This joke stopped being funny, like, immediately. As I was saying, The Thing made about a million more than Firestarter and ticket sales, so... Additionally, the movie was filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina in 1983 and is credited as being the first movie to be shot there, which led to North Carolina becoming a popular location for filming and a regular hub for the film production industry. Ratings and Reception Critics universally disliked Firestarter and the most vocal critic of all Stephen King movies, Stephen King, was among them. King stated that, of the numerous adaptations of his work, Firestarter was, quote, one of the worst of the bunch, unquote, which was a statement he would likely wish he could take back when the multitude of awful King movies that Night Shift spawned proved to be infinitely worse than Firestarter. Roger Ebert gave the film two out of four stars, saying, quote, The most astonishing thing about it was how boring it is. There's not a character in this movie that is convincing, even for a moment, nor a line in this movie that even experienced performers can make real, unquote. Firestarter maintains a 37% tomato meter reading and a 53% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6.1 out of 10 on IMDb, so it seems that audience members enjoyed the film a reasonable deal more than the critics and King. Is it by the book? This movie makes an impressive effort to stick to the source material right from the start. While the locations and some details are changed or omitted, the overall story and a great deal of the dialogue from the book made it on screen. 
The writers made the necessary cuts to King's story predominantly in the right places, yet the pacing of the first half of the film does seem a bit rushed. However, it doesn't feel disjointed or hard to follow. The movie is just under two hours long, and in order to fit as much backstory in as possible, we are subjected to flashbacks by way of dream sequences, which isn't great. But I can see why the decision was made. In the book, King has the ability to just start a new chapter at will, which enables him to effortlessly explore the timeline without having to employ these arguably tacky, dated methods to tell the story. In regards to the screenplay, I felt this movie did justice to King's story, so, so what exactly was this movie's downfall and the cause for all the negative critical reception? Cast and acting. Look, I, I thought the majority of the acting in this movie was pretty decent. David Keith, who plays Andy McGee and looks exactly like Patrick Swayze, delivers a convincing performance. Martin Sheen is reliably villainous. Uh, Heather Locklear, while getting maybe a total of two minutes of screen time, performs admir ad 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 admirably as Vicky McGee. And George C. Scott, while perhaps in retrospect was not a great casting choice and likely would have been cancelled for this role as John Rainbird had this movie been made in the 2010s, is a competent and respectable actor. So that leaves us with Drew Barrymore and her performance as Charlene Charlie McGee. Barrymore was only nine years old when Firestarter was released and had already established herself as a child star following her role as Gertie in the groundbreaking 1982 film E.T. That said, Drew isn't great in the role, but I find it was less her acting and more the way her performance was edited that had a negative impact. For instance, she goes for, from being calm and docile to a frantic mess in the blink of an eye on numerous occasions, and it just doesn't really flow or make sense. You can tell it was the way the film was cut that gave Charlie this hair-trigger portrayal, and it just makes Drew's performance seem wildly inconsistent and sporadic. There is one thing Drew does when she is making her mind fires that makes me laugh, though. She looks like a baby that is trying to poop. Which, if you don't have kids or, or haven't witnessed this phenomenon for yourself, it, it looks a bit like this. <laughs> Soundtrack and score. This album has the quintessential 80s sci-fi thriller soundtrack. It was written and performed by Tangerine Dream, a German trio who were synth-slaying masters of the Moog, and while it's not my cup of tea, Tangerine Dream and their insanely massive catalog of music were deeply influential to the soundtracks of genre films during the 80s. They've released 82 studio albums, their most recent of which was released in 2019, and unsurprisingly, Stranger Things would use a number of their songs in the show, and the show's composers would cite Tangerine, G <laughs> Tangerine Dream as the key influence for the original score for Stranger Things, and they also helped create the soundtrack for GTA V. Special Effects this movie is jam-packed with explosions, people running around while engulfed in flames, fireballs flying through the air, and it's all just a really fun time to watch. And for the most part, the special effects aren't terrible. There's no painfully bad CGI to speak of. Nearly everything was done using live action practical effects. And if the movie feels corny or outdated at any point, the blame cannot be attributed to the special effects. Final thoughts. This may not be the general consensus, but for the time the movie was made and considering all the really bad King movies that followed in its wake, Firestarter is pretty damn good, at least comparatively. Sure, it has its flaws, but when it comes to accuracy, action, and acting, it's honestly a lot better than the critics King included gave it credit for. You should watch it. 
All right, next week I'll be discussing the sequel to Firestarter, Firestarter Rekindled. This TV miniseries is not based on an actual King story and features an older, presumably more powerful Charlie McGee. Uh, apparently the show somehow brings back John Rainbird, a character who died in both the book and the movie versions, so I'm equal parts curious and apprehensive about this one. New videos on this channel drop every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so punch the reminder bell with your fist fingers to get reminders. Okay. Goodbye. Be sure to click like and subscribe to the channel for my continued analysis of all things Stephen King, pretty pleased with blood and guts on top. My name is Mr. Doyle, and this is a great undertaking. <laughs>